first Helmet car was so interesting that it was different and you had to rethink everything you were doing to build it, so that was a challenge. It's the only turbine car to have won a race. It ran in the endurance races of that time, racing against the GT40 Fords and the Porsche factory and Ferrari teams. For an experimental car with a turbine engine in it, we were pretty proud of that. I'm Bob McKee, and we built the Helmet car in the Palatine shop back in 1967 and 68. I would say it's one of the more interesting cars that we've done. It ran all over the world, and using a turbine engine was quite a strange idea back in 1967 and 68. But they're good engines, put out a lot of horsepower for not too much weight. In this particular car here, we made every part on the car except the engine, the transaxle and suspension, the body and the frame, and everything on the car we put together in the little shop in Palatine. based on one of our Can-Am cars. In fact, the first Helmet car was a car we had built and it won the SCCA National Championship in California. And when Heppenstahl got the money from Helmet to go racing, we had a brand new car we had just finished, but we knew we would have to chop up whatever car we had or start from scratch. And there wasn't time to start from scratch, so I traded the brand new car for the car that had won the national championship the year before, and that became the first Helmet car. They run at very high RPM. This particular one runs at 65,000 RPM. It's a light engine. It weighed 175 pounds and put out 375 horsepower. So efficiency-wise, they're good if you can run them at a steady speed. But when you've got to accelerate and slow down and accelerate again, you burn a lot more fuel. And we ended up putting a wastegate on the engine so we could run the thing spooled up all the time at 80% full throttle so we didn't have throttle lag on it. Without a clutch and a transmission, you have to jack up the rear wheels and let the rear wheels spin as you're cranking it over. And then when the turbine compressor gets up to speed, then you turn on the fuel and the spark plug. That ignites the flame and a little puff of black smoke, put on the brake and lower it on the racetrack and away you go. They had cut down the size of engines that they could run in the endurance races because the 427 Ford had won Le Mans, and they were trying to downsize the engines and slow the cars down and make it safer. They figured that a turbine engine like the Continental engine we used was three liter equivalent. 
three liter to three and a half liter were what the gasoline engines were. And there weren't many choices in this country because all our engines are generally bigger than that. Howmet was interested in getting attention for their company. And a good way to do that is build something strange and different. So when this car showed up, it got quite a bit of press attention and articles and magazines and newspapers and newsreels and they were happy with that. In hindsight, if we did it again, I'd make it a two-speed or a three-speed. It would have been more efficient and done a better job, but we had to build this car for $10,500 back in the day. The rules were wide open and you could use your imagination and make something interesting and fun, and I think everybody enjoyed it more in those days. Back in 68, it was kind of anything goes, anything you want to build or make, you could do and race it somewhere. And it just was an interesting mechanical challenge to build a car and go out and race it. And I enjoyed the personalities of the mechanics and the drivers and the people. And it was just an exciting thing to do. And it's neat when you build something when you're 30 years old and come back when you're 80 years old and see it still running around the racetrack. <laughs>